All right, welcome. This is my first recording for a game I've been posting on my blog site. Um, uh, J uh, Tiller Bulge 44, now it's WDS Bulge 44. This is the starter scenario. Uh, through turn one through four, I've posted uh, on my blog site, which I've got up here on the screen, but I'm going to try something different here for turn five and post it on YouTube. Uh, and see if the recording works. I think that'll work for computer games. I'm also posting for regular war game board games and probably going to stick with posting uh, directly on the blog site for those. So uh, this is, uh, I'm taking this opportunity. I've got a bunch of John Tiller. I'll use that even though it's WDS now. I'll still call him Tiller because in honor of John Tiller. Um, so I've got a numerous games, numerous areas in that haven't played as much as I'd like to. I'm just amazed at the coverage, so I'm using this as a vehicle to get back into the series. Um, this one, Panzer Campaigns, but hopefully I'm going to get into the rest. Panzer Battles, First World War Campaign, Squad Battles, Napoleonics, Civil War, Early American War. Um, it's really amazing how much he covered. So I'm using this one as a chance to get familiar with the Panzer Campaign series again. Maybe I'll go to the Blitz Club and start doing PBEM again. Uh, and then also an opportunity to start populating my blog site, my YouTube site with live content. Up to now I've been just posting previous stuff that I've posted all over the web over the last, wow, 10 years just to get it all in one place. So with that said, let's uh, see where we're at with the starter scenario. I've got, I'm going to poke into each of my previous postings to see what's here. Uh, this is the starter scenario from Bulge 44. Um, I think, yeah, this looks like the initial setup here. Let's see if that makes it bigger. Nice. Um, so we see here basically it's the, uh, I'll just quick summarize, 18th Folks Grenadier. Uh, and their goal here is to um, make a breakthrough through the Schnee Eiffel. Hopefully I set it right. Very heavy forested. Uh, wooded area, kind of maybe if not mountains, large hills. So to make that opening and breakthrough. And opposing them is, oops, the 106th um, division. I just clicked for my turn here, which is fine. Uh, and if you do know anything about history, they successfully pulled off a northern and southern pincer. I don't know the exact details, but they did cause uh, to surround these troops and they did a mass surrender, probably the biggest surrender of American troops during World War II. Uh, so here we see the first turn and I am doing that kind of northern and southern pincer. Uh, you see here, here are the two regiments. Don't know their exact names. Uh, I think they're in the text, but two regiments are going north uh, and we already have identified some U.S. Infantry Battalions here in the Schnee Eiffel dug in. So kind of looking at this thinking maybe one regiment will see if they can slip around this flank. The other regiment with supporting troops can slip around this and then this middle regiment will engage and keep occupied whatever is here in the center. Now we see as the game goes on things become revealed that it doesn't quite go according to plan. Uh, and then back here we've got the Divisional HQ and supporting artillery. Uh, these are anti-tank guns. Uh, we've got, I believe these are Stugs. And down here we have a group of Hetzers uh, tanks. Don't really anticipate running into American tanks. We're dealing with a, a infantry division. I guess there's going to be three regiments, three battalions each. Going to have some engineer units, uh, some supporting artillery. That's what we're going to run into. And this is a relatively new division if you know the history. So they aren't uh, blooded yet. Uh, that's why they put them here, because they thought this would be a quiet sector. And of course, that's all going to change. So at the end of the first turn, uh, I believe what happened was, yeah, this started reaching out here, coming around. Here are the big victory point hexes. There's four of them. Uh, so hopefully we can get these two initially, and then somehow figure out a way to get these. Uh, so contact here. I believe they exchanged fire. The yeah, enemy units moved up here too. Did learn the slow going here in the woods on the road. Um, Got to be careful. You can go into travel mode. Just don't want to be in travel mode when you engage the enemy. So there's a timing issue there. 
also found out that the stacking limit here is in the parameters data. I may show you if I do the uh, when I get to the actual turn five that this these hexes are not conducive of units stacking or moving through each other. Pretty much creates a traffic jam. So you got to be careful as you move through here. So down in the south we have uh, so far they haven't bumped in anything. Here's a trenched road. I thought I saw somebody there when I moved up, but Anyway, so this regiment and supporting troops, engineers, and Hetzers are moving for Blee Jaff. Okay, so um, these are that's our pincer movement here, and these are the deception units. Um, see here, there's four of them, and so I did take advantage on turn one to deploy one back here. They can potentially uh, mess up U.S. troop movement travel mode, etc. here, crossing bridges, attempts to demolish, you know, demolish bridges. So I dropped one here first, and then as we move forward, maybe I'll drop some more here. Oh, I dropped a second one. I think this is all the same one. They have a 5x range. So they're here to kind of impede what's going on behind the lines, right? So with that said, let's see if we can get back here and move on to turn two. Let's see what happened. Yep. And if we take a look at that, I start breaking this out by the different areas. Uh, and let's see, this is, uh, I believe, yeah, this is down in the south, starting down in the south. And we do finally run into, we kind of catch a uh, American artillery battalion in travel mode on the road. Um, so we do start taking some shots and was able to get the Hetzer staying in travel mode. That's taking a risk, engaging the enemy, but... I believe we disrupted this guy and we used our artillery. So trying to hook around, prevent him from retreating into the victory point hex and potentially setting him up next turn for an assault from this battalion here. Well, the other two units stay in travel mode, maybe circle around here. Um, this is up in the north. Uh, we start deploying to attempt to uh, take the victory point hex. We do find some greyhounds back here. They pop up. Actually, I think what happened was they were there to start, and I assaulted, and they were able to. They were pushed out, uh, and then I used the Stugs to try and slip around them. But then I, as we see down here in the north, oops. Well, we found a good chunk of the 106th here. Didn't see them before, but it looks like a lot of them are in the Schnee Eiffel, and they're attempting to pull back. So I was hoping to use the Stugs to kind of trap them there, but. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to work here. Um, they did abandon their trenches last turn. That was interesting. So we've started moving them back. But now the goal would be with all this power here, I don't know if the northern group's going to have the, the the strength to push through them. So their goal may be containment. And relying on the southern group, hopefully, with less resistance to be able to break through here and then go up and take the big victory point hexes. You can see that here. This is a better picture. So we see here we're starting to get engaged with a lot of the 106th. Our goal is shifting here to just keep them busy and hopefully down here in the south we can break through quickly and move up and take these two. And from a victory point point of view we need these two. Um, and then the Americans moved. And yeah, a lot of them got out of the woods. We got some more units. They're being drawn up here. But unfortunately, too, uh, it looks like an infantry battalion was able to slip into the victory point hex uh, before I could try and take it by coup de gras uh, the next turn. So that was turn two. Now we can go to turn three. See what happened there. Again, up in the north, yeah, we did succeed in taking uh, the victory point hex um, and we parked some anti-tank guns in there just to cover it. Uh, we did move forward trying to push the Americans, identify them up here in the north, see who we have to engage. And uh, the Stugs are in an interesting position you'll see next turn. Um, they actually, there's no zone of control here. Potentially next turn they could move up here and go take a run, but we'll see. Okay, yeah, I used the Stugs to kind of hook around here, and we found some more Greyhounds, so they were protecting their flank, didn't get around it, keeping these all engaged, a lot of them were disrupted, and we see the same thing kind of going on 
in the center. These battalions are moving backwards out of the Schnee Eiffel, and they're, this regiment's just trying to maintain contact. And down in the south, um, yeah, the assault was successful. We broke the artillery battalion, and then the rest of the group here starts moving up to set up for a potential assault um, next turn on the victory point hex. Yeah, and I think this is the American turn. The artillery uh, battalion that was broken has moved off, probably somewhere up here, and I don't know if there's more units. And we see another battalion appearing here. So uh, we're finding most of the inf most of the 106 is pretty much was up here. Question is, through these four units, can I keep them occupied, or can I even slip behind them and and trap them? We'll see. Okay. And here's the victory status here at the end of the turn. Uh, I've got 56 points, which is basically this, and I've inflicted a few more casualties on the U.S. I think at this point casualties are kind of the same. That's not going to be a big differentiator, so grabbing these two victory point hexes will be critical. Let's just go to turn four, and then we'll be up to date. Okay, and then looking up here, yep, up in the north, uh, hey, we pulled this down here, we tried to isolate this one, came down here, assaulted, um, trying to, you know, keep them occupied, go around them, although I'm getting, getting a bit nervous, there's a lot of infantry up here, most of them are disrupted, um, except I think for this guy. So, kind of keeps me occupied here. The Greyhounds are moving up. They were disrupted. There's an artillery battalion here, but it looks like they're staying in the village, and it's not a victory point hex, so I'm not really concerned about it, but I am keeping the victory point hex here occupied. Uh, moving here. Oh, this is what I did do. You'll notice here you, this Stug is no longer here. It did. We'll go ahead and take an end run. And it was able to first blow by this artillery battalion. Probably surprised him. Uh, I did move it here going for the for the main event. It was in travel mode the whole time. Found an engineer battalion occupying the big VPX. So then I still in travel mode had enough movement to come back here and uh, occupy the 75. And then hopefully wait for the southern group to make it up here at some point and assist in the assault on this city. And then down in the south we do succeed in taking the victory point hex. Breaking the infantry unit there. But then coming to find out, hey, there's the artillery, we've got two HQs here, you know, maybe if I'm lucky, this is all I got left, you know, some HQs and some artillery battalions, and with this broken unit, if I can deal with it, maybe it's clear sailing. And, unfortunately, when you look at the American turn, I think that's it. Uh, oh, where did he come from? There's a lot of American infantry. I almost feel like I'm outnumbered here, so he isolated me. Gonna have to do something about that. And then we've come down here and we'll see, oh, where did he come from? And he's, actually I moved my HQ up, because um, I'm still learning the rules, and the closer the HQ is to units, uh, the better effect they have on disruption, supply, etc. So I figured instead of keeping the HQ here, trying to support both of these, you know, being halfway, uh, it still keeps these all in its command range, 15 axes, but brings them closer to what I think now is the critical movement, the southern flank, trying to come up here and grab that last victory point hex. So, but now the HQ is threatened. An American infantry unit I didn't expect appeared. One of the HQs moved off. I'm assuming another HQ is somewhere up here. Um, and then I've got this broken unit isolated to deal with. Uh, Broken units don't have Zoc. I mean, if nobody's on this road, he can make a run here. We'll see. Okay. Yep, and that's the end of turn four. Okay, so let's bring this back. And yeah, this is what it looks like at the end of turn four, start of turn five. That's a better way to put it. And so now we're going to do the U.S., I mean, the uh, German turn here. Um... So, let's see, I just look at my artillery, they're available, unavailable, probably out of shells or something. So I do have two artillery units. Um, I'd like to deal with this broken unit, I don't know how, and I'd like to move up here. 
Um, and then, of course, this is troubling here. Uh, not disrupted infantry unit here also. But in the end, if I can just hold the victory point hexes, and we're on turn five, oh, well, we've got plenty of time. Which actually, at the rate I'm going, it would be better if it wasn't so much time. And I've got to deal with this one being isolated. Um, so let's see, I got all of these are disrupted. All of these are disrupted, as you can see in the top left. He's disrupted. He, wow, all of these are disrupted over here. Um, so the only undisrupted U.S. unit is right here up in the north. So the question is where to use the artillery. Um, should I save it or should I use it? Now, I do have a broken unit out in the open, but the assault's going to do the work. I think I'd be wasting it on him. Um, you know, I could fire on him. Let's see. Okay, so when I pick this, this picks the artillery unit, and then highlighted are the units that I can fire at. Uh, so thinking about this, you know, I'm thinking I want to disrupt somebody. He's a threat, uh, but he can't fire on him, so that's irrelevant. Got an HQ here, but I'm not really too worried about him. I would love to disrupt him. Um, so it kind of weakens what he can... Oh, and then we've got the unit here, but I can't fire on him. So a lot of times the technique in Panzer Campaign is use artillery, air power to disrupt units, and then follow that up with uh, an assault, because disrupted units are vulnerable to assaults. Actually, a best practice is don't assault undisrupted units, uh, unless it's somehow overwhelming. So in this case, he's the only undisrupted unit. I am going to fire on him. And it didn't work. Oh, got to right click. Wow. That artillery is pretty loud. Got four men, no disruption. Two men, no disruption, and now I'm on the second one. So the question is, um, could come down here and I could try and go for routed. I haven't read the rules enough to know. Um, this guy in the out open, I'm not really going to assault him. I really don't know what he's up to. I imagine if I start threatening here, he'll pull back. I don't think he'll be aggressive. Because I'm not playing a human player. If it was me as the Americans, I would go off to the races here. So, let's see if I can do some more damage to him. Soften him up some more. <laughs> One man. Okay. Who knows if that had any effect. And this artillery unit is unavailable. So, now it's time to do some work here. Got a whole bunch of Americans here. I don't think I'm in a position where I can really start maneuvering to get around them or trap them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Average infantry division, that's all your infantry. Three battalions per regiment. But then there's one down here, and I know there's an engineer up here. Um, so I think what I'm going to do... Low ammo, that's a problem. Low ammo and isolated, that's a real problem. So, you know, I think... Okay, this, this guy can fire. And these guys are disrupted. Let me, I'm going to live on the edge here, and I'm going to actually try and insult these guys because they're disrupted and surrounded. Hopefully I don't get disrupted by this fire. Uh, holy smoke. Alright, didn't get disrupted. That's a relief. Let's see what happens. Boom. Wow, I should have saved my artillery. Well, at least now I've closed the line here. Now, I've still got a problem here. i got to deal with him. Um, I think I can use him. 
See, if I come down here and move him out, that'll make him not isolated anymore. At this point, I don't want to be trapped by the Americans. Um, and he's disrupted. He's low ammo. We'll see if we get lucky. Um, I'll go ahead and try it. No. I drew American artillery fire. And that's it. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, he pulled here. That opens up the line to this guy. Hopefully he gets back. So let's see. He can probably still fire once. And he's got all his movement. Uh, the question is, should he stay here and maintain contact? Or should he pull back one hex? Not too excited about this guy. Well, let's see where he can reach at least. Not many choices. He could fall back here. Um, not like this guy can move real fast in the woods here. Hmm. All right. Well, let's let's move up here as I think about that. He's still got eight movement and he's out in the open. Clear terrain. He could move here get 20% but then I'm kind of extending my extending my line here it does then that frees up these all to go do something else potentially which would not be good but I think I'm going defensive here and he's in clear maybe should he fall back to the town okay too many choices got disrupted here we've got this guy here Let's see, they're reachable hexes. Wow, they can't go anywhere. Hmm. If I pull back here, these guys become unengaged, so he can't go there. Zock to Zock. I'm not going to do anything with him because I don't want to draw fire. It's bad enough. So I think at the risk of being overextended, I'm going to stay in these positions. Uh, it's got about a lot of vehicles there, but I do have an anti-tank. I got 15 guns. Horrible morale. Hmm. You know, I could put them back here. Maybe I should pause the recording as I need to kind of duke this out. Uh, I think I'm going to use him to fire here. Fatigue. One man. Yeah, got Not impressive. They still got one more shot. I got to keep these guys occupied. Nope, that's it for them. Uh, he will just stay there. Range one. So the question now is, do I leave this, this guy out in the open? Morale C, fatigue 80. Or do I pull him in a trench? But then that'll free up. One, two, three, four. Nope, don't want to do that. And if I fire, all these guys are going to fire back. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> 11 men. 8 men. Okay, he's done. Uh, low ammo. I think he'll hold, and I'm not going to draw fire here. Not low ammo and isolated. Yeah, we'll keep him here because their goal is to keep them engaged. Okay, so that finishes up here. They're done. Although I could move this guy up. It's got a range of 10. Don't necessarily like relocating my artillery, but. Um, yeah, learning game. Let's just do it up. He's all dude it up and <laughs> not very far. But hey, there we go. Yeah, because we've got to have range on these, so it's time to move him. All right, let's go down here to the main event. 
Uh, how am I going to deal with this broken unit? Hmm. Wonder. He's disrupted, so all he can do is fire or move. Here's the interesting thing. A broken unit has no zone of control. Um, so let's move him up just a little. Now I need to leave him there to keep that guy surrounded. Um, where can he go? He can go all over the place. Yep. Um, didn't find anybody, so he'll stay there. And let's uh, let's go ahead and do the assault here. Well, could do it from here. What can the HQ do? He can get around to here, or he could fall back and block the road. Well, I'm going to take a calculated risk and maybe pull him around here. All right, so now how are we going to deal with this guy? Hmm, if I succeed, that means this guy's off here. I don't know what he'll do, but I could use this guy. And then he could move in behind him if he had to. So many choices. F see, fatigue three, he's solid. Let's uh, do that. And let's see if it lets me do that. Okay. Um, yeah, let's see what happens. Got him down to 107 men. That's always nice. He didn't have anywhere to go. Uh, I do have another fire with him. I don't want to use him. Maybe I could finish him off. Let's see what this one does. I haven't quite figured out assault. One unit, two unit, multiple assaults. Who knows? Another 49 men. Um, yeah, I think because of this guy, we're just going to stay here. Six men. Five men. No, getting American. Sorry. He's down to quite a f not very many men. Now, I wanted to move him, really. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I can at least move them here. So let's let the engineers... I uh, hate to use them for recon, but let's see what's up this road. And that answers that question. Not very many guns, and I can fire at them. Should do that. Oh, nice! Oh, I guess he's disrupted. Uh, he can't move anywhere, down to five. So all I've got left down here is him. What's he going to do? Let's see how far he can... Well, he can get to here. Let's try the save button here. And then he loses that. Okay, that's... Well, I don't know what that tells me. That gives him a chance to fire, but I think what's more important is this guy is a problem. And I can't, I could move here to keep him occupied and then later shift over here. I think I'll do that. Uh, he can't fire. Or maybe he should move here to keep this guy surrounded. I'd love to move here, but uh, yeah, that's what I got to do. HQ can't go anywhere. 
so it looks like everybody's moved. Um, let's just make sure here. Um, there is a uh, check next unit. I think that's that one. Uh, what are you looking at? Oh, my Stugs. They s oh, these guys. Thanks. Um, hmm. I don't know if there's anything else back here. I'm not going to... I mean, I could leave this, or do I want to be stuck here? It would be nice to move right here and cut the road. That would be a calculated risk uh, if I was playing against a human player where they would probably slip in behind and take this. But in travel mode, he can go pretty far. I know there's an engineer here. I mean, or he could come here and block these guys from coming down. Let's see how far he can get with saving his. Yeah, he can get all the way here. And he could get out of travel mode. And then he could go either way. Kind of like that idea. I mean, should he help or should he go here? And then he's potentially in position to move over here. But he also ties up this guy. Huh. And I know there's an artillery unit out here. So let's see if I can get around him. Uh, I'm going to take a calculator. here. Okay, I can keep moving. Oh, my. Okay, that's far enough. Time to get out of that mode. And we've got an error. Let's see. Movement 16. I don't think I can fire. Wow, these, these Americans have a lot of artillery. Don't think. Nope. I think I'm done. Let's see. Yep. All right. Awesome. Going to turn off that. There we go. So you can see. Wow. It's turning into a free for all here. So I am going to save as. Quick access. It's not there. That's annoying. So I have to do it this way. Uh, you don't need to see that anyhow. And let's go to the decision games. Just bear with me here. Maybe I'll edit this. Maybe I won't. Uh, I'm trying to make these easy to make. Nope, not decision. I want to do a uh, computer game. Tiller. There it is. And save games. And we're going to call this one... Turn five German, and then we're going to watch what the Americans do. Okay, save the game, end of the German turn, and here's our last action of the day. Let's see how they react. It's going to be the end. Oh, they're going after, trying to keep me in the Schnee. Okay. Can't quite figure. Okay, that's interesting. Park some stuff on that road. Maybe I am playing a. That does mess with my supply. Left him in the open. Come on, Andy. Still think I have been. There's a way to speed this up, but I'll just let it run. Ah. I just got disrupted. Should have pulled back into the woods. Thank you. Can't 
do anything to those greyhounds, apparently. All right, here we go. Oh, now the Stug's isolated. Great. Uh, one out of one HQ out of command, one artillery unit unavailable, two units low on ammo, one undisrupted or broken out of four. Oh well. Uh, we'll do a quick analysis here. Broken and isolated, that's good. Stug is isolated. I should have done something about him. I don't know how he's affecting. Out of command. They're still okay. They're okay. That's the Stug. What are these? Oh, those are Stugs. Looks like a Hetzer. Okay. Got an HQ. Has no zone of control. Um, I wonder if there is. Where'd the engineers go? Uh, not quite sure what to do with that Stug now. It's not good being isolated. But it does have movement, so this is a problem right there. Looks like these guys didn't start pulling back too much. They're still staying here and engaging. Okay, I'm not isolated. Not isolated. Low ammo. Disrupted. That's a bummer. And, oh, he undisrupted. Oh, but they undisrupted too. That's a problem. He's okay. I don't know why all the U.S. units are staying up here. Maybe the HQ unit here is to undisrupt them. Hmm. Anyway, so there we go. That was turn five for both the Germans and the U.S. And I'm going to stop the recording here and see how it did and maybe post it up to YouTube. So if I did and you're listening to this, have a nice day. Stand by for turn six.